right. go. Here we go. What's up? It's your boy, Head Coach Ross, the Attacks Gym. The Street Warrior himself coming at you. Helping me out is my cousin. Shout out to Sister Coach. You already know what it is, you know. We call him the Black Batman. Just black man. I'll take that. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, listen, here's the situation here. We're talking about something a bit more serious. We indicated to you before that we would make uh, uh, we would make videos and vlogs dealing with real world events as they occur and how they how our techniques can address and help issues which are controversial at this point in time. The one we're about to address right now is um, the attack. Oh, I call it an attack. Um, the unjust. What is it? What did they use? Uh, they used a taser on him. They punched him. And pulled him. They pulled poor Doctor Dow off the phone. Correct. This is the unprovoked, uncalled for assault by United Security personnel yeah. upon uh, the, depending on which reports you you read and believe, the Vietnamese American or the Chinese American doctor, Doctor Dow, uh, who lives in the state of Kentucky, who was peacefully sitting in his chair that he bought for and refused to 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 relinquish when uh the the individuals on the passenger plane he was told that they, that, that they was on were told hey you know what uh the, the the seats had been oversold and we need four people allegedly at random yeah very i have to get my air quote on exactly all right because that's questionable stuff you know right but allegedly selected at random by the computer told them to get get on up and leave. Now, three of the passengers, at least if you believe the common narrative, you know, I haven't seen any actual objective videos here, yeah. but three of the passengers, you know, got up and yeah. left on their own. Yeah, with, with they received right? $800 voucher. Yes, yeah. an $800 voucher, you know, and they decided, hey, okay, we'll go ahead and go. Now, Dr. Dow, for whatever reason, is, you know, decided not to leave. Now, we cannot automatically assume he's just being stubborn and stuck up because he's a doctor. We don't know if he has patients, whose continued health rides upon him returning to his uh, to his practice at a particular time. We have no idea about that. So because since we don't have knowledge about that, it is premature and I believe unfair and, and more than a taste racist to assume otherwise. Because I have never heard anyone make those statements about white doctors who are in similar positions. And yeah, I can cite a few, so don't go there. All right, so <clears throat> now what we're going to do here, this is something very important that we have to understand. We don't recommend that when, even with Dr. Dow, who I believe was just in his desire to not want to give up his, his seat, we believe at this point in time you have to use your mind and be very objective and analyze the situation. Should, should he have given up the seat under those circumstances? I would, absolutely. I, I would recommend that 99.9% .9 of you guys do that. I mean, between uh, you, you and myself, we have over 40 years of security experience. We've been on the other end of these circumstances with, with people who have every right to whatever it is that we are quote unquote protecting or, or uh, enforcing. So being on both ends of it, I would definitely encourage that you guys think calm, rational, and unless it's a matter of life or death that you definitely adhere to the rules. Because I guarantee you when you click yes and confirm, it's going to be part of the terms of service. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well said. We have experience not only as being chocolate, the man with the permanent tan in America, yes. so we're receiving the unlove. We've also been, as he stated, yes. between the two of us, we have something like four decades of experience on the other side where we are actually enforcing the law. So we are in fact law enforcement uh, uh, experts, personnel, and we have a great deal of respect for and understanding of the proper <laughs> non-racist yes. application of techniques when you're dealing with 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 recalcitrant or 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 belligerent people and there's a lot of them whoo there's a lot of them there's just there's just a, a a strain of humanity that just wants to emulate the understanding the gluteus maximus as much as they possibly can all right <laughs> yeah but dr dow doesn't seem to be doing that no at all no no so in this situation here's you know we recommend first that you do give up your seat yeah. But if there's a situation that 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 uh, that 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 places that decision in an entirely different context, like we talked about, there's a there could be a in his case there could be a client whose life or lives depend upon his timely arrival. 
then you have a reason not to give up your seat. Now, even if you explain it to the security personnel, they're not going to listen. No. They're not going to listen. They're, no. they're told to pull you off. And here's where the problem starts. Yeah. Because now things get really complicated. You are morally justified in what you're doing. They have the law on their side. All right? So, and they're professionals. They don't bear you any personal ill will, hopefully. No. You know, right? But they're going to try to get you out of there. So how do you interact and deal with them physically? in such a way that the entire scenario doesn't escalate and they don't see you as a threat that they have to permanently neutralize, mm -hmm. all right, or they just overreact and constantly beat on you, all right? The first part has nothing to do with you as a passenger. The first part is something that these guys, security personnel, and we're talking from decades of experience decades. here, okay? These people are not properly trained. No. They are not properly trained. The, their higher-ups do not care much about them at all. As a result, they are, they are put in very untenable situations by suits and people in the offices who will throw them under the bus with the wolves yeah. as fast as they possibly can. And a lot of people are throwing a lot of static on the, on the security personnel. The, the problem actually resides with the suits all the way at the top all the way at the top yeah. and, and when we say this we don't mean fat joe we're talking about all the way up we don't mean you know <laughs> okay all right now with that being said i'm going to answer another issue here didn't, didn't people say ask us all the time something like what are they saying like you know what, when do we need the yes, explain, yes, explain that to they, we, we get this a lot you know um our methods are thorough and with that we get a lot of people where we, uh, they say we're, we do overkill or you know when do these situations occur i mean we all have social media and with this world now connected the way that it is all you have to do is pay attention and look you know um this situation could very easily be a car factory or um, in me if you asked me to give up my seat and i was going to see a graduation or you know, once in a lifetime situation, maybe a, a love a funeral. Funeral? funeral. It could be anything. Exactly. Oh, they're going to catch hell and, <laughs> and everything <laughs> else. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, um, this situation in particular. Think of it as a carjacking, or maybe uh, someone wants to uh, rob you and your girl when you go out on the movie or something. You know, it could be anything. But these types of things happen all the time. All, all you have to do time. is look. All, you, all the time. Understand this. Look at this situation, not only from the perspective of the doctor, but as my cousin just said, look at it from a situation when any time you need to not give up your position here. Exactly. You know, if it's a carjacking, most people say give up your car. Yeah, and I would say that too. But if your kids are in the car, yeah. if your wife is in the car, you do not have the option to give up your car. Because giving up your car is giving them up. Yes, it is. Okay? Now, if they bailed out, you know, that's another thing. Give up the car. But, you know, here you go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There you go. Just... Just, just, just softball, softball <laughs> pitch the keys, okay? Yeah. But uh, oftentimes it's not the situation. What happens is you're, 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 you're beset with a sudden physical assault, and immediately your fight or flight instincts kick in, particularly if you're untrained. And this is what I'm talking about here. I have to emphasize this: those of you who are untrained, particularly in methods like ours, you're the ones who are going to make a mistake. That's why you don't understand why, hey, there's some significant value in, the, in what we're talking about. But we're going to teach you about the value right now. We're going to emulate the assault that Dr. Dow was in, and we're going to break it down by phases. Okay, he's sitting here, you know, uh, the guy, the guy, uh, the main dude who is being, you know, investigated right now, and the suits needs to be investigated. He's just doing what he was told to do. Yeah, All right? Now, this guy right here is grabbing Dr. Dow. And I'm Dr. Dow, and Dr. Dow grabs onto his thing. It's like, no, no, ah, ah, screaming and stuff like that. Ah. Now, eventually, this guy, you know, manages to collapse Dr. Dow's hand in, pulls him in toward the other side because he's trying to resist. and pulls him in, oh, face first hits the other side of the of the um, of the aisle with the passenger seat. You can see a clip of it. Yeah. All right. And now, while this is happening, another individual is two more here who are also pulling him. So he's fighting here, this guy's pulling here, and then when they finally pull him in, all this joint force pulls him here, bing. And then this individual tasers, tasers Dr. Dow. Ah! Dr. Dow goes down, and then they unceremoniously drag him off. He later returns to the seat, to, oh. the, to the chair, I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, he returns to the aircraft, he's bloody, there's blood trailing from his mouth to his ear, and he says, he says he has to get home, 
just kill me. Yeah. Just kill me. Yeah. Oh. And you're gonna have to do a deep dive to find it because they're gonna cut that part out. Make sure you pay attention to that. Very good point. This yeah. is absolutely essential. Many of the crucial nuances that really put the proper context to the entirety of not only this situation, but all of the other situations we're talking about since before Trayvon Martin, mm. since before uh, Rodney King, who was actually called Glenn King in the street. If Rodney, you could tell you didn't know him. Yeah. You know, right? Uh, well, that's another story. Uh, since before Monster Cody, before all of that, there's always been significant pieces of information to give the proper context for the person being violated that is that is mysteriously edited out and happens to help the richer, more immoral individuals or institutions in question, all right? Yeah. Always remember that. Now we're gonna do the technique you could have done. Now here's important. We're gonna do the technique and we're gonna do it from, from not only perspective of the person who's defending themselves, but also our perspective as, as law enforcement exactly. personnel. Exactly. It's very that. important that you understand this because you cannot execute movements that will make law enforcement feel you're threatening them. No. Because they will then escalate force. Absolutely. Which is absolutely within the law and within their right and within their training. And also, you would do it too. All of you watching, exactly. if you're calling for someone and, he, and he's really resisting and he's threatening and he's counter striking and you yeah. feel like you're in danger, going you go, you're going home. Yeah. You're going home. You deal with all the rest of that stuff later. Yeah. But you're not going to get beat up and run over and possibly harmed or hospitalized or killed. That's not going to happen. So now you see all the more why it's vitally important to learn the actual intricacies of, of posture and technique. And we're going to get to that right about now. Starting off here. All right. Remember, there's three people here. The reason why we don't have three people here right now is because the other guys aren't here. All right. Now, I'm going to break it down step by step by step. And also remember that the, that the, path, the, the, the passageway is narrow. Yeah. The pathway through the through the, the airplane is now it's barely it's barely wide it's barely as wide as 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 let me step back here it's barely shoulder width here because they dragged him off this way remember yes, they did. and his feet were together and he, and his feet were already covering both sides of the aisle and you know dr dow being a vietnamese american or chinese american it's not really the biggest guy in the universe all right so keep all of this in mind oh yeah he's 69 Yes. So how much of a threat could he be? Yeah. Six. Anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> the the security personnel grabs him here. All right, and starts trying to pull him off. Doctor Doctor Dow grabs him here and starts trying to resist. This is a mistake because now it's a tug of war where Doctor Dow is going to lose. Mm -hmm. He's seated here. He does not have sufficient you know rooting and posture and position to be able to stop even one guy no. who's younger and stronger and has greater endurance, much less three. So what you do under these circumstances is, he grabs, okay? You resist, you grab, and make, make this individual root to try to pull you away. Right here, then you, take, then you let go. You use his own energy to help you. You let go of breathing, his arm comes up. Does this look familiar? Step away, please. Does this look familiar? It should. This is the posture that you're in. Come back. His arm comes up. What you want to do is lift his arm up, manipulating him here. This hand pushes him to his hips, turning him here. This guy is still pulling, all right, but he's not able to really get to you because you're now using the structure of the individual who's doing the most work, the one who wanted being investigated by by uh, by the the F, FCC, I believe, you know, or somebody, you know, right? He's being investigated right now using this guy's structure right here to defend yourself against the other two who are here. You're not going to take your next step and put your hand through here. All right? This is this position here. So, <clears throat> you, you grab you here. You, you resist. Uh, it's pulling. It's pulling. You go here. Then you step in through here. In tight. Now, with this hand, let me turn the camera to be sure you can see this here. All right? <clears throat> Get my, my adjustment here. Now, right here with this hand, with your head in, arm up, you're looking at, at the next two guys behind you. You have your eyes on them. This hand, right hand is hooked in, grabbing on his thigh. All right, you're now gonna drive off your left leg, turn, and you're putting yourself behind this man here, who is going to turn to try to deal with you. 
at which point you're now able to get this posture here, and you're able to start now using him, stopping, stopping. What you're saying here is stop, stop. You're talking to them. You're gonna use your verbal judo. You're gonna use your de-escalation. You're gonna use your udangan yifu yes. yes. here to de-escalate this issue. It's of great importance that you understand this, okay? So now you're using this guy to defend against the other three. What's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up having to constantly shift because if not, you're gonna have to hit a base stance here and again, you're gonna put yourself in a position where it's force against force. You do not want to use force against force. Now, because as you can see the difference here. You start driving, start driving. You, know, you might be able to start getting me going. Here, I'm gonna fight for a while. That's why you might, he's gonna start getting some space here. So what you're gonna do here, you know, keep driving, keep driving. Here, I can't stop it for too long, right? But if I take it off, now, now that things, things reverse. Okay? Using a bracing angle. A bracing angle. That bracing angle comes from understanding the structure of postures. The structure of the Ngoma Yahu Dangan Yifu. The structure of the Ngubo Fremo. I mean the Fremo and the Ngubo Fremo. This version isn't even on the, the Ogun version. This is just a basic expression here. Will you tell me what it's like, what it felt like? Um, Anytime that you go up against the power frame or the uh, any anything that has a bracing angle, it's like hitting a wall, a brick wall. And I know it's coming. I still wins. Imagine hitting someone who doesn't expect it; they're gonna fall flat on their butt. Exactly right. This allows you to further engage and use your words to deal with the security personnel. You're like, you're like hands up. Exactly. Hey, hey, listen! And they're gonna grab you. They wanna start grabbing at you. You're like, hey, look, look, you know. Oh, listen, 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 look, look, look. I just want to keep my seat. I just want to keep my seat. That's the type of thing you do. If you, and start explaining your side, what's going on. Look, look, I'm a doctor. If I don't make it back, listen, listen. If I don't make it back to my, to my, to my, to my, to my practice, look, listen. If I don't make it back to my practice, my client, my client is going to, okay, okay. That's what you're looking at. So if people are asking, come on. Okay. Yeah, shit, we're going low. Listen, if I make it back to my practice, look, 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 look. If I make it back to my practice, look, look. Uh, okay? You get the idea? Yeah. If I don't make it back to my practice, you start explaining your side. People, the passengers will start hearing you. Eventually, what will happen is these guys will have to stop. Yeah. They'll start talking to you. Okay, listen, sir, look. We understand what you're talking about. What if we contact your office and see if we can get somebody to. Yeah. They're not trying to shoot you. They're not trying to kill you. They're not feeling threatened by you. All right? At this point, maybe somebody else will give up their seat. At that point, that's entirely possible. Yeah. You saw how the rest of the passengers were connecting on a human level with poor Dr. Dao. All right? That's what you should be doing. Now, you know what else you should be doing? You should be subscribing to this website, I mean, to my YouTube. You should be supporting our website, attacksgymcapoeira at googlesites.com. Should we be hitting it with a like? You should be sharing. Should we be leaving comments? What else should they be doing? Um, leave a comment. We love for you guys to come to our sites. And again, positive dialogue. Let's communicate. I love that. Let's do that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we need to do. Positivity. Understand that it is the lack of knowledge that we in the self-defense field are not presenting to the general masses that gives rise to these kind of circumstances. Absolutely. Okay? Now... This is Head Coach Ross, the Street Warrior, signing off, okay? And this is? <laughs> Assistant Coach Bill, thank you. You already know what it is, all right? Asante sana. Ashe amani.